The year is 1955. Chrysler wanted to offer a cheaper alternative to the Hemi. You have to remember, in the early days of Chrysler, the Hemi was the only V8 design, and it was uh, kind of expensive to produce. Chrysler Corporation offered the Hemi across all brands except for Plymouth. Polyspheric, or Poly for short, also goes by the name of Red Ram, Semi Hemi, and Spitfire use the same exact engine block as the Hemi engine, but the heads are totally different. But not just the heads, the push rods, exhaust manifolds, and pistons are all different between these two engines. In a polyhead engine, combustion chamber is formed by two shallow concave domes. It's also important to note that poly engines used a single rocker setup, or SRS, with a single rocker shaft inside each head, whereas the Hemi used a dual rocker shaft, or DRS, making the polyhead version lighter and cheaper to produce. Poly engines have a distinctive look. Hemi on top, poly on the bottom. Both use the same block, both the same block size. Just look at the difference between the poly heads. They have like scallops, whereas the Hemi's, the big giveaway is the spark plug location is generally through the valve covers themselves. Two distinctive looks. It's important to note, not all of Chrysler's brands got a poly version of the Hemi head. Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler had poly versions. DeSoto and Imperial only had Hemis. DeSoto would eventually use a poly head engine, but that's in a different engine group. We're only covering the engines from 1955 to 1958 in this video. Also worth mentioning, in this episode, we are only going to cover the first generation or the generation that shares the block with the Hemi design. Engine displacements we will be going over in this video. 241, 260, 270, 315, 325, and those engines were used in Plymouth and Dodge. Chrysler also used the polyhead engines. Their engines were called Spitfire, and they had 301, 331, and 354. To mitigate confusion, just like the Hemi episode, we are going to go through all of the engine families for each brand, starting with Plymouth and Dodge because they shared their engines. 241 cubic inch displacement, polyhead V8, 4 liters. It's good for 157 horsepower, 4400 RPM, 217 pound feet, or 294 newton meters at 2400 RPM with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression was 7.6 to 1. Featured five main bearings, was fed with a two-barrel carburetor. It was only used in 1955, and it could be found in any of the Plymouth models like the Plaza, Savoy, Belvedere. Available mid-year 1955 for Plymouth, it was the bored-out version of the 241 cubic inch displacement, making it 260 cubic inch displacement. Polyhead V8, 4.2 liters. It's good for 177 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 231 pound-feet, or 313 newton meters at 2,400 RPM, with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression was 7.6 to 1. Up next is a 270 cubic inch displacement polyhead V8, 4.4 liters. It's good for anywhere between 175 to 189 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 240 pound feet, or 325 newton meters at 2,400 RPM. Bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression is 7.6 to 1. This engine could be found in Dodge products from 1955 to 1956. 315 cubic inch displacement polyhead V8, 5.1 liters. It's good for anywhere between 218 horsepower with a two barrel carburetor all the way up to 230 horsepower with a four barrel carburetor at 4,400 RPM. Up to 316 pound feet or 428 newton meters at 2400 rpm with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches compression is 8 to 1 it was found in anything dodge from 1956 during the years of 1957 and 1958, Dodge offered a 325 cubic inch displacement polyhead V8, 5.3 liters. It's good for anywhere between 245 to 260 horsepower at 4,400 RPM. 
355 pound feet or 481 newton meters at 2400 rpm bore 3.7 inches stroke of 3.8 inches compression is eight and a half to one moving on to the chrysler variants in the basement was the 301 cubic inch displacement polyhead v8 4.9 liters it's worth mentioning this engine was only a polyhead engine it does not have a hemi equivalent it was good for 188 horsepower 4400 rpm 275 pound feet or 373 newton meters at 2400 rpm with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches compression was eight to one it was found in the windsor model line in 1955 in 1956, Chrysler offered a 331 cubic inch displacement polyhead V8, 5.4 liters. It was good for 225 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 340 pound feet, or 461 Newton meters at 2,800 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches. Compression was eight and a half to one. Offered for the 1957 through 1958 model years in the Windsor lineup was the 354 cubic inch displacement polyhead V8. It's good for 285 through 290 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It could make up to 385 pound feet or 522 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM. With a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches, compression was 925 to 1. In 1958, Chrysler would discontinue the Hemi, consequently discontinuing the poly engine that shared the same block. Chrysler would also introduce a all-new engine family that year, the Chrysler A engine family, which also used poly heads. Bit of a side note, so it always amazed me. Aside from Plymouth and Dodge sharing the poly engine, Chrysler brands didn't really share anything with anybody. And I'm just over here thinking cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's where all of the money went. Not to mention the jet engine program that's going on in the background of all of this. Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1956 Plymouth Belvedere or 1955 Dodge La Femme? Or 1955 Chrysler Windsor. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. Would you rather have a 1955 Chrysler Windsor or a 1956 Chrysler Windsor or 1957 Chrysler Windsor? Going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. If you'd like to see a particular engine featured on Engine Episode Wednesdays, put that particular engine in the comment section below. Just be sure it's not an engine that we've already covered. This is the 19th engine episode that we've done so far. I will link the engine episode playlist in the description so you can see which engines we've already covered. As always, thank you so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I really do appreciate you guys. I love what you bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo! Where do I take this pain of mine? I run, but it stays right by my side.